Okay, welcome. Welcome back from our break. We're going to be doing uh, LE2, Chapter 3, Lesson 2. Please turn around. Uh, building a positive attitude. This whole chapter has to do with your personal uh, experiences and understanding your attitude and realizing how that can incorporate and really predict a lot of times your success in a project or in life. Uh, lesson two ends up being basically a lot of terms, a lot of vocabulary. If you look on the right there on page 115, you can see uh, that those are words that you've heard of, things like uh, denial or acting out or mentor or humility, respect, patience. This uh, lesson two mainly talks about building your positive attitude so that you can carry it on into your life. Uh, lesson three, which we'll be covering tomorrow, has to do with overcoming challenging experiences. I call those the curveballs in life that everybody will have, and uh, we will do that tomorrow. So let me call up here. Everybody's got their CPS clickers, and let's engage. All right, y'all see that? It's online. Great. Uh, building positive attitudes. The, one of the main things that we need to worry about today is learning about respect and appreciation and uh, focusing on people instead of yourself. Uh, overview, thinking about different experiences you guys have had, some of the positive and negative experiences, how people have reacted to uh, certain things. Defense mechanisms. Everybody's got defense mechanisms, you know. Don't want to be insulted, don't want to be embarrassed, don't want to admit that you're wrong. And a lot of times if you bring those up too much, you, you never do grow from your experiences. Attitude. Hmm. One of the things that you need to realize is that attitudes that you have, matter of fact, if you talk to some of the, uh, if you read the stories of some of the people that survived the, the death camps of World War II, the death camps of World War II, uh, a lot of times they will say the only thing they had to control, because they were so much treated like animals, the only thing they had to control was their attitude, because everything else was external, all the influences that were the torture that they were given, the lack of food, the, the death and destruction around them, but their attitude was the only thing that they had to control. Uh, when I was a child, I actually met a uh, survivor. My, my grandmother had a friend uh, who survived the it was, uh, Holocaust, and she was a doctor. She and her husband were doctors. And they literally walked off to school one day, to, actually to, to work, and they took their kids like they were taking their kids to, to work just to, you know, be with them for the day. And they never showed up at work. They, start, they literally walked from, from uh, Germany to Austria. It took them about eight days and over 100 miles, of course, of course across mountains. We're talking mountains. And uh, they had nothing, literally, the clothes on their backs. But with their education, and she had a very, very positive attitude till the day she died, she came over here, and guess what? She became a doctor in a country where she didn't even know the language. So think about whether or not you could go to Austria or Germany or Switzerland, learn a language, and become a doctor, if you were a doctor over here. So she had a complete attitude. really did impress me. You may stop that. Um, positive attitude. Uh, bottom line is positive attitude. Uh, people make things happen. And I'm sure in your life you've seen people, maybe in your family, or your friends that you can look up, they always say, hey, you're the type of person to look up and see sun <laughs> or blue sky, or do you look up and see clouds? Uh, or are you the type of person to look at a, a glass, a bottle of water, and you see it you know, mostly empty, or you see a little bit of water in there, hey, looking positive. And uh, this is something you completely can control. Uh, I see this, I saw this last week, actually. I had a cadet come to me and say, Colonel Peebles, you gave me a D. Do I give people D's? Do I say, Colton, I just don't like you, man. I'm going to give you a D, okay? <laughs> no, that's not the way it works. You earn whatever grades you want. That's just the way it is. I mean, the numbers are numbers, okay? So uh, 
Anyway, I always try to remind the kids that tell me I give them grades that, uh, that I really uh, want them to succeed in life. I mean, I promise you it makes you feel better as a teacher to give an A versus an F. Defense mechanisms. This is part of you growing up and being an adult. And I'm telling you, uh, your development into being an adult <clears throat> from a middle schooler <clears throat> to a graduate in high school, this sort of determines these defense mechanisms and your ability to accept constructive criticism determines whether or not you grow up. And I'm sure you know adults right now who have never in their life admitted they've made a mistake. Never. My dad was one. <laughs> my, my mom was not. Uh, but the bottom line is if you make a mistake, how can you learn from it unless you admit it? I don't know if any of you guys have had uh, alcoholics in the family. I've had them in my family. Uh, and, or alcoholics or addiction. Addiction to drugs, to porn, to alcohol, to video games, any of this stuff. Unless you admit, admit that you've made a mistake or that you're addicted, you're never going to get over it. And so uh, defense mechanisms, oh, it wasn't me. You made me earn that F. My dog ate my homework, okay? <laughs> I actually had a situation the last couple of weeks where uh, homework was not turned in. And I asked the person, it was in my locker. I couldn't get the locker open. <laughs> Whose fault is that? Wasn't my fault. <laughs> so uh, I'm just saying, as far as you guys trying to be adults, defense mechanisms are a key, key thing. That's the thing, that they put it in right. They what now? they put it in right, it would probably open. It would probably open, yeah. Or you got keys. Everybody's got keys to open these lockers, too, if you have an emergency. Um, look at the bottom statement on this, guys. Constantly using defense mechanism is a sign of an immature personality. How many of your family and friends and brothers and buddies never admit that they deserve that F? Or you know what? A girl broke up with me and it was all her fault. Well, maybe you were treating her wrong or maybe you were mean to her. You know, that guy got in a fight with me and he just came over and started beating up on me. Yeah, right, okay? Maybe, uh, maybe some other things happened. And again, it comes personal. Uh, divorces, guys. Is it ever one person's problem? One person's re... My mom got divorced because my dad was so mean. Well, you know what? Usually it's... A two-way street on both situations. Why did she have an affair? Why did she have an affair? Because oh, it's always just, it's just just one person, right? Well, I'll tell you the exact situation, Cody. Is that when I was uh, 28, I was married to the wrong girl, and she had an affair on me. Was it all her fault? And I don't. She, died she, she was a doctor. He was a doctor. She was a doctor, and he was a doctor. So I got blown off in my first marriage. And I, yeah, I feel real horrible about it, but it wasn't just her fault because through the years, I obviously didn't treat her right. And I obviously was immature for the time and I could have done better. It was the best thing that happened to me because I met my current wife and have my kids. So it's all part of God's plans in the big scheme. But I'm just saying, guys, look around you and determine how many of your friends and families or you guys admit that you have problems with social media, with friends, with families, with alcohol, Internet. with drugs, with porn, all these things that mess with you, okay? Shoplifting. You know, sitting in this room, there's probably, what, a half dozen of you guys have shoplifted regularly. It's just, just running the numbers. It's a fact. So again, shoplifting, I had a friend in high school that shoplifted. And what happens if you're a successful shoplifter? What do you think you're gonna, what, that gets boring after a while. What's gonna happen after that? You a car. <laughs> You decide to buy the stuff. You decide to buy the stuff. You decide, you know what, shoplifting at Safeway is, shoplifting at Safeway is too easy. So I'm going to try something else. I'm going to go to Walmart. And that's too easy. And then I'm going to go start doing cars. Because I, you know what, I make more money shoplifting cars, stealing cars. Grand Theft Auto. Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> I'm not talking about the game. I mean the actual crime. Okay. So I think you all get my uh, point here. Uh, Integrity and credibility. Can I read? What's integrity? Doing the right thing when no one's looking. And doing the right thing when everybody's watching, right? 
It's a tough call, and that's a peer pressure. All your buddies are doing the wrong thing, but yet you want to do the right thing. Your buddies are shoplifting, and you go, man, that is not right, and I'm going to walk away. Uh, I, have, I have cadet situations in the past few years where a cadet was with a friend. Cadet Moore and Cadet McKinney go out to lunch at Safeway, and one of them picks up something, and the other one walks. If you walk out with your friend who has just shoplifted, who's guilty? Both of you. I'm telling you, and both of them went to the pokey. And, of course, the one who didn't steal, he goes, you know what? I didn't steal anything. It wasn't my fault. I saw her take it. I thought I was going to put it back. What is that? Defense mechanism, right? What Immaturity. If what if it's true? She, she was hanging out with the wrong person. She made a choice to hang around the wrong person. If you hang around people who don't steal, you don't get in trouble. I was out in the National Forest, and I didn't, you know, those guys had beers over there, and they were drinking, but it wasn't me. It wasn't me. I wasn't doing that. They were underage drinking. It wasn't me. Who's going to be in trouble? Everyone. We have cadets in our school. We have cadets in our school that have done this and have criminal records right now. Uh it's a fact. And do you think that's going to affect them the rest of their life? Yes. yes. You better believe it. How is their integrity... And credibility. Not very strong. I'm just telling you. Credibility is the quality of character that inspires trust. All right, questions. Ready to click? Yay! Ready, go, click. <laughs> Happens quick. You should look at what people answer. I guess I need to get my head out of the way here. <laughs> Mr. Manding. Ain't nobody get married to her. She a lot, she a husband leader. I could not see. What? I could not see. Oh, she's a husband leader. Oh, there's another one. What? Yeah, uh, so, uh, that's still some just as wrong. We had Colonel still owes us like four dances. Two, two, two. two. Oh, oh, what? what? Really? Really, guys? Wait, how many people are us? Like three. Oh my god. Two. 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 Oh, he didn't show you the answer? No. Oh, yeah. people, you didn't show me the answer. I couldn't possibly get it right. Ted Simpson. Sir. Uh-oh. <laughs> it's not. It didn't even count. Positive role model, guys. Well, I don't know why. I'm scared. Oh, I'm scared. <laughs> the ability to bear difficulty without complaint. Hmm. What would that be? Oh, good job. Good job, guys. <clears throat> Excellent job, guys. You guys are the best. What is a role model? What is a role model? Can I be all? Quiet. What now? Excellent. Role model is someone that you look up to. Okay? Honestly, one of my role models, uh, I had two that helped me start the ROTC. Do you stop having role models when you're 52 years old, 53 years old? Do you stop having role models when you're 80? No. Does your role model have to be older than you? No. I mean, really, it is not, OK? What about when you're my son's age and Ryan is 13 years old? Is he too young to be a role model? No. Who would look up to him? His young 12-year-olds. Younger siblings. He's a scout. He's an Eagle Scout. So guess what? Kids who are not Eagle Scouts would look up to it, right? That's one of the things that you need to realize that even in high school, with your uh, siblings 
and with the people around you, and especially when you wear these uniforms that we give you, uh, you're being looked up to. And when you're a role model, me, maybe, what if tomorrow, what if tonight I went out and celebrated my wife's birthday, Susie, and uh, we have too much to drink, I have three or four drinks, and I get caught and I get a DUI. Is that good for a role model? No. And Colonel Peebles is a partier. He just drinks and drives all the time. <laughs> Don't quote me on that. But you see what I'm saying? When you're a role model, you have responsibilities, guys. You have a role model responsibility. And when you wear these uniforms, when I get Johnson is trying to get into the Marines, and everybody knows that, and everybody's looking up to him, and he goes out and parties and gets a DUI, that's probably not that good, okay? Probably not that good. What about... <laughs> What about President Obama? People look up, he, America elected him to be president. What if he came on the TV and started cussing really bad and wow. using bad words? And it was on the prompter. It was on the prompter. <laughs> I love it. Okay, guys, here's the uh, role models. Can be older and younger than you. I'm sure each of you have got somebody that you've looked up to or am looking up to. Uh, I, my role models from point one were my parents and my grandparents when I was a kid. I had a couple good coaches, you know, in sports throughout the, uh, my, my life. And then when I got in the military, of course, me being a young guy in the military, a, a lieutenant, a fighter pilot, had older fighter pilots that I looked up to and tried to be like. So uh, these are people that you need to look up to. Okay, if the role model is the person you look up to, what is the person below you? What, what are you? A uh, role model. Role. No, the role model's up here. What are you? The role model lead. What's the term? Role model lead is called a? Over. Close. Protégé. Does anybody know what a protégé is? Apprentice. A protégé. Protégé. A protégé is what the role model works on. So you're the protégé. They're the, the role model. A mentor is a life coach who guides you through your different lifestyles. They may be your, may be your wife, your spouse, your mom or dad. They advise you. They give you positive feedback. Here is something that America does not have enough of. You don't even know what this word means, right? Who? <laughs> I'm just kidding. What is humility? <laughs> what is humility? Cadet level. The opposite of pride. Opposite of pride, yes. Uh, is it bad yes. to uh, <laughs> have, you know, what is arrogance? Arrogance is the opposite of humility. Well, what's arrogance there, Cadet Hoffman? Or are you like, you're kind of arrogant to like the, what's going on, uh, um, you know, you're like really prideful and so you're kind of full yourself. Try again. Okay. You kind of refuse to admit that you're wrong. Ding, 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 ding. Defense mechanisms. I'm never wrong. I am so proud and I'm so arrogant I couldn't possibly make a mistake. But do you think that person ever gets any better? Oh, no. Uh -uh. I'm just telling you it doesn't happen. And whether you're a parent or you're a student or you're a coach or you're a player, I saw it yesterday. Uh, yesterday. I saw it yesterday on uh, no, it was Saturday. I was watching my son's soccer game. This is over at Pioneer Park, Ryan plays soccer. They were playing against a team where this one individual, this one kid, we've seen him grow up. And he's, he's as big as Colt, and he's very young, and he's very good at soccer. But you know what? When he gets the ball, he scores. But what happens when he doesn't get the ball? He, uh, <laughs> he's on us. <laughs> you know, you know pass to me. He was not a team player. He was not going out and helping the team. He was waiting around for people to pass it to him, and then he would score. And you know what? That was the way he was last year. And he wasn't that much better. He's a big boy, and he's good. But you know what? Bet me anything, by the time he comes to high school, he isn't going to be much better. Because until somebody teaches him humility and lessons learned and the fact that he needs to be a team player, it's not going to happen. And guys, you'll see this your whole life. I had a cadet already this past year who was, did not have this. I couldn't tell him anything. You need to turn your grade thing, your rework in, turn your homework in. You need to make better grades. You need to listen to your people. Well, I know everything, and guess what? They're gone. 
they're gone. Yes? You should become a, a youth, like a soccer coach and then have that guy on your team and then don't play him at all. Would that teach him? Yeah. <laughs> How do you teach humility? How do you teach humility? You know, you know what? I'm reading this book called The Sports Gene. Do, who, do you think uh, LeBron James and Michael Jordan, and who's another good athlete? Uh, hey, man, do, you do you think they are born with greatness? Yeah. No. I mean, well, it's in their genes. Yeah. Well, I mean, do you think LeBron James would be a great principal of school? Yes. Or was he born with his play basketball gene? People would look up to him if he was a principal because of his other. Cat McKinney, I need you to turn completely around because you're talking too much. Just completely around, please. Okay. So the point is, I'm not convinced about the sports gene. Of course, LeBron James is a big boy, and he. He's a big boy. But the bottom line is it came down to practice. The theory is 10,000 hours. If you compare a violinist who's the top 10 in the world to a violinist who only plays on the New York Symphony, uh, doesn't play on TV, to a violinist who's a school music teacher, there's 10,000 hours of dedicated personal practice uh, so that those people are that much better. And that, when you practice, when, when Michael Jordan was the first person on the basketball court practicing, and he stayed there till the last, and he was the best in the world, guess what happens? He keeps getting better. Tiger Woods, exact example, practices all the time. He, was, he, he had just won, Tiger Woods had just won the Masters, and was the youngest person to ever do it, won by the most strokes, he said, you know, I'm not good enough. I need to change my, my swing. People couldn't believe it. He changed his swing, and he was the best in the world. That's what humility is, guys. That's what's humility. It makes you good. Fear, pride, indifference. Indifference is something very interesting. I see that a lot. I saw that this morning, actually. I had a, uh, an issue with a cadet. Indifference. Tell me what indifference is. Don't agree. You what now? Agree on the same thing. You don't agree on the same thing. The fact that you have no desire to get better at anything. What causes what causes the fact that you don't agree that you should give what causes that? Yes, sir. Laziness. Laziness. Why are people lazy? That's a great question to ask this class. Why are people lazy? because uh, they think they have other better things to do, but you know, like Priorities. Scared of rejection. Like they think like playing video games. Playing video games will get me ahead in the world. You know what? This is the first year I talk to, uh, you know, a lot of my cadets about what they want to do after high school. And the last previous years, people would say, oh, doctors, lawyers, military SEAL teams. But this year, there were dozens of you guys who wanted to be video game designers. And I admire that. That's fantastic. But then my next question is, how are you preparing yourself for that? Like, do you know... COBOL, you know C++, you know any of the computer program game games? No, no, I play the games. So I want to be the world's best baseball player, and I watch it. <laughs> okay? But do you really get in there and know how to hit a fastball? <laughs> well, but I watch a lot of games, okay? And I'm going to design these. Oh, who, what, what's the latest uh, Rome Total Warfare? Total War is my son's game that we, we play. A million and a half lines of code? Three million? I mean, it's ridiculous. And so how many, how, if they have three million lines of code, how many programmers they have? Like a lot. A lot. Like a, like a lot. But guess what? Do you learn how to program three million lines by playing the game? No. Yeah, no. That doesn't have anything to do with programming. So I'm just saying, you guys got to think about preparing yourself. Don't be indifferent. Don't have pride that I can beat Beat that game every time when you're not going to, you need to have something, you hit patience. Oh, probably, gosh. probably thinking he'd, rather, he'd be the tester and just playing it, not running it. How many testers do you think get paid? How do, they, how do you become a tester? You go and you got to know how it's built. What are you testing? Well, I built it, so I'm going to test it. You're not going to be plucked out of Prescott, Arizona just because you play a game and go test it. Yes, ma'am. Not only can you test it, but there's also like 
competitions where you can play the video game against other people. Uh, you know what? In your your lifetime, I bet there will be professional gamers. I really, I mean, I, I mean, but there's there's a how many in America make money doing that? If you're really good, I mean, how many in America make a like it? There's 130 professional golfers. It's like gambling. So it's probably usually, if you look at the professional gamblers, you look at professional gamblers, what, what kind of lifestyle and career path do they go through? Like six years. Okay, and then they're usually bust because they're addicted, right? I mean, it's a, it's a definition, right? Think about the concept. Are they patient? Are they humble? I mean, do they, do they think about uh, the learning through their patience and diligence? Are they the professional athletes who work this 10,000 hours that I told you I've been reading about to, to learn it? Okay, respect. Hmm, how do you get respect? How do you get respect? Give it. So do I, do you walk into my thing and I say, I respect you just because you're a person? Boy. Well, I kind of do, because guess what? I know you guys are good kids, and I know you guys are taking, taking my class, so I give you respect, but the point is, <laughs> and I'll, golly, I'm so old, I got all these great cadet stories. I had a cadet a few years ago who was making Fs in my class, and I came and talked to him, and the parent was mad at me because I was giving their child an F. And I said, well, ma'am, you know, they haven't turned in this, they haven't turned in that, they haven't turned in this. Well, you're not respecting my child. And I go, well, let's look at the grades. Okay, I mean, you haven't turned anything in, they're not wearing the uniform. And they go, no one here respects my child. I go, well, let me look at the other grades. Five other classes, three other Fs. So they had four Fs and, and a D and a B or something like that. No one here respects my child. Well, you know what? you got to be kidding me. Do you earn respect? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of situations, you know what? By wearing a uniform, that means that they have done something, right? When we go to Emory Riddle tonight, we meet a doctor who's a rocket scientist. You don't know him, but guess what? He has done something with his life. When, when, you're, when you're my son, Ryan, and he got an Eagle Scout at 12 years and six months, you don't know him, but you know what? He's done something. So when you walk into my classroom and I don't know you, and if you have two or three years of junior ROTC, you know what? I'm going to probably hire you for a job because you've done something. But if you haven't done something and all I see is an F, I respect you as a human being, but I'm not going to respect you as an academic or a professional. Are you going to be mature? Are you going to be... Accepting constructive criticism? No. When I go and have a conference with cadets, which I had two last week, I, mean, I have these conferences, and I sit in the conference and say, hey, I'm sorry you got an F because you know what? You're not showing initiative. You're not turning your stuff in. You're not, you're not being excellent like we request you. Well, you don't respect me, and you don't do this, and you don't do that. The kid's not accepting constructive criticism. They're immature. Does that make you mad when I say you're immature, Colton? No, sir. No, sir. <laughs> no, sir. Everybody does that every day. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, in general, for every teenager wants to be the mature adult. And when you have immature actions to say you're immature, that generally is a, uh, a bad thing to do. So uh, you generally show respect for others by these characteristics here. Being on time. That's kind of the basic thing that uh, gets me, and you know, that's our culture. You realize other cultures have different time. You know, other cultures, you don't have to be on time like America. But in America, if you're late to a meeting, guess what? All these people are sitting there waiting just for you, and that's being disrespectful to them. And I promise you, if you're young, or even if you're old like me, <laughs> I show my respect to whoever's calling the meeting by being there early. If you're early, you're on time. If you're on time, you're late. And if you're late, you're fired. That's exactly how I, I view the things. Um, give people the benefit of the doubt. Don't spread rumors. Loose talk. Uh, social media. Hmm. Don't you love how social media, everybody talks really great when they're anonymous? Okay. Uh, 
what is some of the, well, you guys, you guys know the websites, but you can go to some of these social medias and you can be anonymous and cuss and say all these, all these, what, what, ma'am? Ask FM, ask me, ask FM. But you know, the uh, yeah, if you're anonymous, you can be as rude as you want. I mean, do you think they're really anonymous? Yeah. yeah. Try it. You try applying for a government job, and you show profane language or illegal activity or suspect, and I'm trying to hire him, and he looks like he interviews. Who are you going to be hired? So I'm just saying, everything you go on the internet, everything will, will be held against you in the future. It's a fact. It, it already happens. It already happens. You said, again, you all are not mature enough to understand the significance of your social media. Uh, so let's see. Respect for others. Be flexible. Stick with peoples and their feelings. Appreciation. Everybody loves appreciation. Grateful that you've uh, done some hard work. How do you get appreciation as a student? Bye. Doing your work good thing. By making good grades, by graduating. This is free education, guys. You realize in other parts of the world, this is not education. You have to pay for it. And I, the day you graduate from high school, you're paying for the rest of the education the rest of your life. So this is a free education. So you show your appreciation by taking it seriously and graduating. And if you don't, you'll be paying for the education the rest of your life. It's a fact. All righty. Next question is... Ready, set, go. Colonel, we have 10 minutes left. All righty, thank you. We'll finish up with these questions then. Everybody makes mistakes. How are we doing? Woo! Procrastination.
Okay, excellent. We're about finished here, uh, wrapping up lesson two. Tomorrow is going to be lesson three. And why don't we go ahead and dismiss the class, please? Thank <laughs> you.